Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, humans, non-humans, and inanimate objects alike, it's time to learn some StarCraft. Today, we are stepping in to more Terran versus Terran. We started earlier in this week talking about the core strategy, looking at some basic example videos, and you may recall this slide talking about the rough phasing of the game. We got some opening play where you take a second base relatively quickly. You extend out onto the map. Really important, that phrase, extend out onto the map. Take a third base. And then there's mass expanding about for positioning, there's late transitions and so on and so forth. Today's episode is going to focus on openings in Terran vs. Terran. How the hell do you start this off to be able to get to that three and four phase that was listed there? And the important thing to recall about these openings is that these are not specific build orders. Build orders in StarCraft, once again, are like nine supply depot, 11 barracks, 11 refinery. It's really specific timings at which you do those things. We're not going to go into that. We're going to show you the rough gist of it and then refining it down to a build order is what you will do with your own time. Uh, but what I wanted to do in exploring this is I wanted to take a look at some variations of what I consider to be the modern ultra canonical standard ass opening. And the reason that I call this the super canonical standard ass opening is that it's an economically focused build that gets you a second base very fast generally leans towards playing defensively. And we're going to look at variations of that because the variations in other matchups tend to be, you know, uh, do A first and then B versus B first and then A. Th things can get pushed off or thrown off pretty strongly in this matchup, but they'll still wind up working their way back to this uh, third or this second phase extending out onto the map with a lot of tanks and holding positions while we take a third. So let's just look at this and think about some of the big threats that I talked about in the opening phase. One is losing abruptly to a bunch of vultures. Another is uh, wraiths coming in and you're underprepared because you don't have anti-air. And the third way to lose easily in the early game is some weird tank push. We're gonna take a look at a lot of those. Um, all, actually gonna take a look at pretty much all those variations today. Um, so let's look at how this very standard starting grounding build starts us off. First of all, as we looked at in last week, Marines suck at pretty much everything. Vultures destroy them, Goliaths destroy them, siege tanks destroy the shit out of them. So look at what happens with the barracks very commonly in the matchup. It's finished and it instantly lifts off. The barracks is one of the best scouting units and we're even going to look at in next video tactics and plays utilizing the barracks in this matchup. We don't need Marines for defense. We don't really need them for offense. Maybe just need a handful to deny a scout, but no big deal. Lifting it off and sending it out. Factory gets constructed uh, right away. It goes barracks and then refinery. And I want you to note something very interesting. Um, our hero last in this game, the Purple Terran, pulls all of his SCVs out of the refinery, except for one. He first puts in three, then builds this factory, and then pulls all out but one. I think I skipped over this pretty fast. Hilariously enough, of all the videos that I compiled today, this was the last one, because there were so many weird games. Um, and Terran vs. can have some weirdness to it. But here again, you'll see the barracks gets built first, and then look up in production, you'll see a refinery gets built right thereafter. Money gets collected, three uh, SCVs in that refinery, and then a factory down here. Now, this style of Terran vs. Terran is really interesting for me to watch because during my time in Brood War, things kind of close or adjacent to this opening were used quite a bit, but this specific style of opening the game is now rampant. Like, tons of top Terran players do this style every single game. And this style, again, how does it deal with mass vultures? And not just lose to that. Mass vultures are bad once tank count gets high enough. But if it's low, I can just storm in and win the game. How do I deal with wraiths? Because if I don't have enough anti-air early on, or I should say, if I have no anti-air, I just die. And how does it deal with weird tank pushes? Well, let's, let's look at this. Factory's done. Immediately the command center gets produced. And interestingly, a vulture gets produced out of this factory. This is one of the most interesting things to me um, because people are so tank focused in this matchup. Um, 
in mid and late game that the old school logic was get get the tank as fast as possible get an add-on to this factory but what modern terran players do is they say well first let me make sure i don't lose to vultures let me make sure of that and then once i feel safe i get the add-on take a look at the mini map on the mini map this terran player you can literally see right there has a command center thank god he's in bright yellow instead of brown or some shit that's hard to see bright yellow command centers down last identifies that oh my opponent's early expanding there's no threat of some weird rush happening and so i get the add-on right away oh look at this i even <laughs> i even recorded this into the video look this terran player went command center first so the factory isn't even done and that barracks is going to get in there and scout soon so literally right when that vulture finishes an add-on is placed now here comes one of the most interesting questions in Terran vs. Terran openings. What do I do next? Pretty much always, when you get the add-on, you also get this other factory. But, but now what? I want you to just stop for a moment and put yourself in the shoes of a Terran player playing against a Terran player. We have to worry about mass vulture or losing to vultures. We have to worry about losing to wraiths. We also have to worry about losing to some weird-ass tank push. Terran players nowadays have decided that one of the most effective methods is just build a crap load of vultures yourself. So, vultures continue to get produced. What's next? Mines. Now, why mines? We can plant mines to deal with some weird-ass tank push. So, if I'm building vultures, that's how I'll stop your vultures. If I'm building mines, that's how I'll stop your tanks. But how do I stop your wraiths? Don't forget, there's a scouting barracks there. And if we can just keep moving our vultures out and keep pressuring, we can identify that a wraith is coming. And we need hardly any anti-air to deal with wraiths because they're so flimsy. And you might be going, wait, 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 Sean, how do you deal with wraiths? We're going to look at that in subsequent um, videos. Is it actually the next video? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm amazing. So you'll notice there's no add-ons getting placed at these additional factories. There's vulture speed going down. Mines are getting planted everywhere for last in this opening. He's trying to get control over the space of the map. Notice how different these mine placements are from something like Terran versus Protoss. In Terran versus Protoss, you want to be planting mines in clusters, kind of making walls. Look at this mini-map. It's, it's, it has like little purple dots everywhere. This is really common because his vultures don't set off my mines. Vultures do not trigger spider mines because vultures are a hovering unit. Hovering units like workers, vultures, archons, they don't set off mines. Uh, and so by placing them all around the map, me, the purple Terran, gets to see what that yellow Terran's up to with his vultures. I can see where every single vulture is. So, we're pretty secure against tank pushes because we got mines all over the place. We're building a lot of vultures just to make sure that we continue to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with his vulture count so we don't accidentally die. And then there's, there's a factory going down. Now there's this weird question. When do I stop making vultures? We'll look at a very specific example in about um, 25 minutes. But the general gist of it is that if I can find time to build a tank... And if I don't really feel pressured, I can build a tank, and then I'm pretty much stable. So, that happens right now. There's the tank coming out. Why does Mong, or excuse me, why does Last feel stable? Because he sees Mong moving out with a couple of vultures, and he's going to pick them out. There's another small smattering of vultures. Last has seen hardly any vultures on the map, and Last is about to kill two right here. So cool! I'm protected against vultures because I built a lot and I killed a few. I'm protected against tanks because I have all these mines all over the place. And I'm protected against um, air because I'm pressuring him and I see that he's building ground units. At this point, we have four factories constructed. You'll see that this refinery just finished. Generally, right around the time you start building tanks is right around the time you begin taking that second gas geyser. And um, Last does what I like to call rounding it out. He gets the academy, he gets the armory, 
And this look, I want you to just fix in your head as the standard Terran look in TVT. An academy for commsats, an armory to be able to upgrade and build goliaths, and then four factories, two with add-on, two without. Just remember that. Four factory, academy, armory, two base, two refinery. This is this is the look. This is what we're trying to get to. This is the standard mid-game look of Terran versus Terran. Now, there might be small variations, like mid, you'll see some games where people have five factories. We'll look at those. You'll see some games where there's three factories with add-ons, such as this one. But basically, you're making tanks with some vulture support, transitioning to tanks with Goliath support. So this has been pretty calm looking. I'd like you to appreciate how late that siege mode is. I mean, look at this. In a matchup that is heralded as the matchup of the tank, tank upgrade gets started, like, I think it's 7, yeah, 7.15 into the game. In the early days, people used to just get this tank upgrade super freaking fast. <laughs> Because, hey, if I have siege tanks, I'm, oh, amazingly, so good, oh, excelente. Um, I mean, but vultures are already dealing with it. And look at how much space control Last has. What is Last going to do with this bonus space? He's going to expand to a third base. So I'd like to stress how important it is this um, extend onto the map thing is. We're actually seeing... The first step of extension being the mines and vulture activity. The second follow-up step, tanks bolstering those. They don't have siege mode yet. Those are coming. Look, some goliaths being produced. Because probably wasn't going wraith because we didn't see any hints that he was doing that initially. Uh, but, you know, may as well start building goliaths. There was a single mine blocking this so um had to be scanned and this this cool we've gotten to mid game we've gotten to mid game where we've extended onto the map and now we're just going to begin mass expanding and battling for positioning but because it's the opening episode we're not going to do phases three and four you can look at other episodes for that i want to come back to this thing and i want to speed it up and just Warp speed go through this because we're going to be referencing this game a lot or this style a lot barracks Factory with everything pulled out of the refinery But one a command center and vultures being produced until I feel safe as the Terran player I love this fast Terran music. Yeah Once we're when we feel safe. We just get the add-on and go for a second factory This is pretty much always how the opening goes and then depending on what we see, such as, hey, it looks like my opponent's playing pretty standardly. We're just going to get vultures with mines, vultures with speed. We want to be very careful that we don't accidentally lose our vultures to massive amounts of his vultures that got speed before us. And since things have been pretty calm, we'll see in just a moment a tank get started right about... After this fourth guy gets started, here comes the tank. Terran feels safe. Boom, there's the tank that goes down. And once again... Rounding things out. We didn't have an academy yet, so we're going to get the academy. We didn't have an armory yet, so we're going to get the armory. Refinery tends to get started right when those tanks get started. Great. Pretty, pretty normal looking opening. Nothing alarming, crazy, weird, unusual happen. Leading all the way up to this expansion, which happens in three, two, 1.7, 1 1.5, 1. There it is. Okay. Back to the normal pace. Okay, so why did I go through that? Well, let's look at this exact opening, but versus aggro versus some sort of weird early push. This is one of the types of early aggression. We're gonna look at some different ones coming up. In this particular circumstance, last builds a barracks. There's the factory with three in it, and there they get pulled out. So the factory gets started and one is left in. Boom. 
But let's try to use our superlative powers of logic to determine what our enemy is up to. So how quickly do we go for a factory? As quickly as you can. Building this command center on low ground, there is a vulture being produced. So how fast is this vulture? It's as quick as humanly possible. Right? So if when I'm building a vulture as quick as humanly possible, I then see four marines and a vulture, what can I deduce? I can deduce very easily that if he has a vulture at the same time I have a vulture and I didn't build an add-on, that means he can't have built an add-on. So there's no way that our opponent built an add-on. See that? So there's no tanks coming. No tanks. This is why I really like this opening. Reads are very easy. Okay, we have a second vulture coming up. What if we spot a second vulture with something such as this um, this barracks moving across the middle of the map? We know if he has two vultures and we have two vultures, he still can't be building tanks. So if my opponent is going for marine vultures and, and I know that he's not going tanks, it's pretty reasonable he might be going wraith. There's an armory going down. Boom, done, see, easy, no problem. I'd also like to stress, if he has a vulture as fast as possible, and I have a vulture as fast as possible, but he also has four marines, he can't have a command center. All right, so we know we're up against a player who's not going tanks, who doesn't have a command center yet. Could be some sort of weird delayed command center. And in truth, last doesn't know. That's a distinct possibility. So we see, again, three vultures get made and our hero last identifies you know i think i'm feeling kind of safe add-on goes down and second factory go down the add-on for the first factory and the start of the second factory tend to happen right next to each other and we're, we're looking pretty good right we're looking like we're doing our opening play of building a little bit of defense getting our second factory and we're taking a second base cool here's what i want to stress that i brought up at the start of this episode in this matchup, or excuse me, in other matchups, you tend to see your opponent doing something and you might get B first instead of A, when normally you'd go A then B. In Terran vs. Terran, things can often, instead of jutting to the side and returning to normalcy, they can feel like they spiral really far away, but then work their way back. We're going to look at an example of this, and we will see that it still flows into that same four factory, armory, academy, Two gas and going for the third base, right? Still going to flow back to the same spot. Let's look at the way that this flows in a seemingly hectic kind of fashion. So first, this add-on gets canceled because last sees there is an attack coming at the front. Immediately, last begins to build another vulture. That armory is almost done. Some cute micro happens. Where Last comes out behind. Look at what Last is producing. Last actually just uh, does an incorrect play and he starts a vulture. In a moment, Last is going to cancel his vulture and build a Goliath. But let's think about the benefit of building Goliaths right now. We're getting attacked. We know he's probably not expanded. Partly because of our intuition, but also because there's a literal barracks looking at a goddamn empty expansion. Okay, cool. That's as intuitive as it gets. So we know he's not expanded. We think it's unlikely he started a tank and he's just attacked us with a bunch of vultures. So probably wraiths are coming or probably more vultures are coming. So Goliaths tend to solve all that. Look, there's the Goliath getting started. Goliaths great against vultures. Goliaths great against wraiths. Here's second round of aggression coming in by the enemy light. Goliath's getting produced. And uh, what's this academy about? Could be cloaked wraiths. Do you appreciate how simple that is? Just, yeah, it could be wraiths. Um, and because I'm expecting that to be the case, let me just get an academy, right? It's really intuitive. 
Not a lot of guesswork involved, just a little bit of deductive reasoning at the outset of the game when we see and producing some vultures. Um, I don't think I actually look at it on the um, on this video recording, but if you look at this base, here is a factory, a landed barracks, and a starport with an add-on. The beauty of the scouting barracks is that you get to just see everything that's there. And by the way, Todd, thanks for the host. Todd is the greatest person that France has ever produced. And yes, in history. So, how does our Terran player last respond to this? Well, basically gets that one add-on, starts building tanks. Scanner sweep. Wraiths are annoying, but they never really kill you. Some scans get thrown down. Guess how many Goliaths were produced? Like two. Not mass Goliath. Just a few. Appreciate how many SCDs get killed off here. But our Terran player just keeps on advancing. There's a really common question. Why not build engineering bays here to deal with the wraiths? Engineering bays, I I will just not mince words. It's one of the worst ways to deal with wraiths. <laughs> Boo! Really bad way to deal with wraiths. Really bad. Why? Because wraiths have a pretty damn long range. So you need multiple turrets at each location to cover your workers mining at your main, your workers mining at your expansion, and workers that want to be doing productive things like building factories and so on and so forth. So if you build an engineering bay, which is 125, and then you build, say, five turrets total, it's like almost 400 minerals, what's 375, it's 500 minerals, 500 minerals just totally gone. You know what's actually better? Oh, and let's keep in mind, those are going to be useless for the rest of the game. There's never going to be pressure in your main base. So it's actually more useful to build these commsats, start building up energy right now, build goliaths that can be very mobile, and if you lose some SCVs, it's fine. It's actually fine. It's actually totally fine. Um, where did my other flip-flop go? Uh-huh, I have found it. I'm running over it with my chair. Gotta get that flip-flop on. Can never do a show with cold feet. So now, the very moment that Last begins to feel some semblance of stability, what is he doing? He is extending onto the map to prepare to take a third base. Appreciate again. You may have just seen it for a brief moment in time there. Siege mode. One of the last things to get produced. Siege mode is very good in the mid game. You don't really need it super quickly in the early game. Tanks unseaged are badasses. We're going to look a lot at unseaged tanks in the tactics video that's following this right afterwards. So, moving out onto the map. What do we think is missing? Well, he already has an academy, an armory. He already has two gas. He's missing the fourth factory and now an expansion. gonna watch a little bit more here the reason that there's no extra factory getting produced is that scouting barracks died <laughs> so now we have some extending out into the middle of the map and dun, 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 dun. command center gets produced so this this seems like maybe some complex stuff's going on but i want to stress that it really isn't if we watch through it uh once again at uh without the pauses in between just a lot of intuitive reading basically you keep making vultures if you are pretty sure you're being attacked how would you know that you have a scout worker that's literally out there getting attacked instant you feel safe you get an add-on and move on with your life there's one other thing that i didn't highlight in the first playthrough that i now am going to highlight for pretty much this entire duration last never stops building workers never in fact, hilariously, when the attack begins, the very first thing he does is not micro any of his units, not adjust anything. He just builds more workers. Here's the armory that's getting built. Why? Because our opponent isn't going tanks. Our opponent hasn't expanded. It's probably going to be going wraiths. Or more vultures. Goliaths are good against wraiths and vultures. 
Yeah, look at this. This gets cancelled. <laughs> and, okay, watch the command center. Just watch the command center. Really hard. You're gonna see it light up. Alright, alright. Alright, Sean. Alright. Expansion command center is nearing completion. It's done instant production. <laughs> He's building workers this whole time, dude. This is what makes losing those units, losing those workers to wraiths, fine. We've been producing out of two command centers. You've been producing out of one command center. We got way more workers. Way more workers. So by going for Goliaths and then an academy relatively quickly, our hero last is pretty much defended against everything. And by stepping a little bit ahead in time, we see that things have converged back to a typical looking mid game. Heard me talk about tank pushes. Let's take a look yet again at how this opening might be twisted and tuned to deal with that. So, we have last once again. Now, why why build a barracks in the middle of the map? That's kind of a weird place to do that. Well, if you think about the barracks as a scouting unit, this is a very opportune location to plant your first dude. Factory. Pulling everything out of there but one. You see in the middle of the map, he produces a marine, sends an SCV to the top left, the barracks started going into the bottom, or into the top right, and there was a single marine produced, yep, that was also going to go out and do some scouting. This marine is very helpful for ensuring that we don't get command center blocked down here. Boop. And gosh darn, what do you know, building some vultures. So, we see two vultures get produced. I think we're safe. So, second factory gets produced. Yeah, seems good. What are some of the things that we would expect to get built now? By the way, I think that this is a big mistake that Last is making. Last can just take this barracks and just float right into the main base with it. He can just see exactly what's going on. He doesn't in this particular game. But by seeing the expansion in the single marine, he thinks, again, you know what, I'm safe enough to just start a, a uh, tank. No big deal. What's getting researched, though? Mines, for the same reason we saw before. So in the last game, there was threats incoming, and we saw last respond by building an early armory, by not getting this add-on by delaying, um, or by getting a fast academy, delaying factories three and four. Let's look at how things wind up being quite different in this game. So first, last, is continuing to produce vultures. He's basically using the one tank just as a little bit of a bolstering force, but it turned out there was some weird ass tank push coming up. Heard me talk about three big threats. Losing to mass vultures, losing to some wraiths, or losing to some weird ass tank pushes. a weird ass tank push. I'm, the interface is working against me. I have to zoom in really far to show. It's pretty normal to just build an academy relatively early because commsats are so useful against mines, so useful when identifying positions. But there's no armory anywhere in sight. And so what do we wind up seeing from last? Instead of getting another add-on to build more tanks, as happened in the first video, Instead of the fast armory and the delayed factories, as in the second video, in this third video, because he's up against a weird-ass tank push, he's just skipping this uh, refinery. He's not getting this refinery. He's skipping the armory. He's going straight for four factories. Why? Because there's a tank push coming at our door, man. Let's try to make more stuff than he has. So... In the early days of StarCraft, this was considered a complete death blow. This was considered almost game, like, oh, he's got tanks at my front. People, interestingly, did not build that many vultures in the early game. Um, more and more and more over time, vultures get produced. Here is an only vulture army from last up against a tank vulture army from um, Black Call, who's a player whose alias I know I'm supposed to know, but I don't. But I have no idea who this player is. But I know that if you say his name fast, it's Blakal, which is funny to me. Here we have um, 
last trying to plant some mines down in front, but look at this, he's just bringing SCVs. Look at how good SCVs are at busting this. He loses some, but not that many. Seeing safety, add-ons get built. Seeing safety, a refinery gets thrown down. Seeing safety, more tanks begin to get produced. And there was a brief moment in time where some very scary pushing was happening. But if you look at this moment, this little snapshot in gameplay, it looks remarkably like a benign TVT where nothing scary happened at the start of the game and we got back to our normal footing. Notice the extension out on the map, extending his vultures forward. Oop, there is the last little piece, because that mid-game Terran is four factories, two with add-on, an academy, an armory, and two bases with refineries. Extending onto the map to get dun, 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 a third that you see going down on the mini-map at 9 o'clock. Block all! Oh, that's so funny, man. That's maybe the funniest thing I've heard all week. And I've had a good week. I watched The Bachelor last night, so I'm so good. <laughs> yeah, look at this, extending out onto the map. And because I'm, I'm really pedantic, I really hung on for a long time. Because I wanted to wait until you could see down uh, in that little corner. There's a command center getting started. Believe it or not, despite the fact that I'm the greatest StarCraft educator that ever lived, I whiffed the shit out of this. <laughs> and I didn't I didn't see it getting constructed. Uh, some weird drop action is attempted by Block All! But, um, you know, holding positions, tank lines being established, and there's the third base. Ah, I found it now. See, look, I boxed it. Like, I can't believe I missed it. So you see there's these openings that go in weird directions, and then they converge back to a normal-looking mid-game. There's a very weird thing that can happen sometimes when you have two people who are opening Vulture where neither of them wants to stop making Vulture. Think about the following. Let's do the following thought experiment, right? I am beginning to mass up a bunch of Vultures. I see you started doing that, but all of a sudden you stopped adding to your Vulture count. Maybe you started producing a tank Maybe you are getting add-ons to those other factories that formerly were add-on-less and producing only vultures. But I notice you just have a few less vultures. I have 12, you have 8. I walk up, kill all those. The units you are producing on the back, very likely tanks, get finished. And I have 8 vultures with mines against 2 tanks. Guess what 2 tanks can't hold off, right? <laughs> So uh, there is this weird period where people were really figuring out that the um, Vulture was a really powerful unit that could exploit people that were maybe just building two tanks and doing something else, or maybe not building Vultures there, and you could just kill them. But people wound up in these like Vulture Wars where it's like, who's going to blink first and stop producing them? And still to this day, it's easy to fall into this trap where you start building vultures, you see that he's building vultures, which makes you feel like it's justification for you to keep building vultures. And it's like, how the hell do you get out of it? We're gonna look at a simple example of this. And I, I frankly like playing this style. Um, uh, or excuse me, Jesus, I, I said the exact opposite of what I meant to say. I really don't like playing this mass vulture style because of the fact that um, I'm bad at it. I really screw up in these mass vulture wars. So this felt like particularly important, at the very least for my sake. Same opening that we've seen four games in a row now, and it's going to have yet a fourth variation to help us be as instructed as possible that mid-games converge in StarCraft Brood War. Builds one vulture, identifies that he is safe. And in order to help win this vulture war, which our... Uh, hero last believes that he is in he builds a third factory very quickly and he gets speed why think about this why this is this is really important because a lot listen listen i know my audience i in fact i know how i learn and i love learning i love sitting down watching educational videos and trying to hang on every single word that the teacher is throwing at me but let's be real honest 50 percent of the shit i say you tune out I know it. I know this. 
maybe as high as 90%. Maybe it's just the smooth tones of my voice going up and down that's lulling you to sleep right now. Maybe you're actually in bed listening to me and you've never made it to the end of any of my videos. I know that, but please, for God's sake, pay attention to just this one fucking thing this one time, okay? Listen to me. You get speed because if you and I are building the same units and I have speed, I can retreat and live and you can never retreat. This is a punishment um, uh, trigger, right? This is, this is like a super duper punishment moment. In Zerg vs. Zerg, in StarCraft II, and in Brood War, if I have speed and you don't, we meet in the middle of the map, speed wins every single time. Same thing for Vultures. So what's happening here, and why in many Terran vs. Terrans, you, like, I haven't shown a lot of games where this has happened because I have a limited amount of time today, but uh, in a extraordinarily high percentage of TVTs, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like 50%. Speed is the first thing researched because we're all going to begin building vultures in this matchup, and I need to make sure my vultures can beat your vultures. Same thing as Boots in League or Dota, exactly as Purple Phil says. Speed is an extraordinary advantage because you can always get out safely. So the scouting barracks, the scouting barracks is now seeing, oh, you're building vultures and I'm building vultures. You have three factories and I have three factories. So I'm not moving out until I got speed. I'm not going to make that mistake. And you know what? I'm going to build a fourth factory. I'm going to build a fourth factory. There's a weird thing you should notice here, right? Four factories, one add-on, two in gas. That's the weird thing. Two in gas. Literally, Last is completely all in on vultures right now because he sees three factories worth of vultures. He's going to build a fourth factory to produce vultures to get an edge in the vulture war because now that we both have speed and both have mines, if we get into a fight and I have 21 vultures and you have 20 vultures, I can win! And then end the game almost immediately. So it's very, very fragile, tenuous situations which I'm very comfortable with because I play Zerg vs. Zerg, baby. But I'm, I'm really horrible at this Vulture stuff. So, playing very patiently. I mean, conceptually and strategically, this is a very interesting position to be in. Four factories. You can barely see that fourth one. It's hidden underneath there. But this barracks is just scouted around and seen, yeah, nothing. There's no academy hidden under the UI. There's no armory hidden around here. It's just... Four good old-fashioned factories producing nothing but vultures. And when to make a tank? When to make a tank? How do you get out of this hell where we're only vulture builders? Easy. You move out with your vultures. And as you begin the move out, you start a tank. Look at that. There it is! Do -do 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 -do. So you got three factories producing vultures, one producing tanks. And you begin an engagement like this. Here's the big vulture fights. Imagine for a moment that blue didn't have speed. Green would not only win, green would prevent these blue vultures from ever retreating. And so all these vultures would crush these, and it would be something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll assume that these two die, so that's down to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, if these two die and it's down to 7, then... Okay, 7 vultures versus no vultures. It's very difficult for SCVs to withstand. <laughs> but because last started that tank, look at it popping out just in time. Boop! Boop, it's a tanky! An academy gets built. Good build that academy generally as early as you can. And hey, now that I'm starting to feel safe because I got a tank, I'm feeling some stability, I'm going to get that second refinery. And lo and behold, this is going to turn into a relatively normal looking game. Hey, I'm actually feeling sufficiently safe. I'm going to get one more add-on. I'm going to keep making vultures. I'm not going to halt that anytime soon. But now I feel like I've got some tanks and I can begin to extend out onto the map as is common in every single game that I'm showing today because that's how Terran vs. Terran works. It's very hard to find a Terran vs. Terran where stand out of the map and then take the third is not common. Why the armory? Because the 
it, the standard components of Terran mid game, four factories, two of that on, two without, two refineries, an academy, and of course an armory for Goliaths and upgrades. Looking to move out onto the mini map. Woo! He's been putting mines down! Yeah! He's building a command center because that will be floated down to the southern position, which he has established control of by putting tanks and mines in the middle of the map. Oh, so sick. All right, cool. Let's stop talking about this opening and talk about being aggressive, yeah? I gotta get through two more sample videos uh, with you before um, we're going to switch to tactics in Terran vs. Terran, where I think I have like maybe 25 videos to show. Lo lovely tactical play in TBT. Oh, so excellent. So here we have the reverse side of that interesting aggro opening. This is Light, my favorite attacking player. You can, you can tell my favorites are in this series, Flash, Last, Light. Things are going to look pretty normal at the start compared to what we've seen. A barracks followed immediately by a refinery. But in contrast to the openings that we've been seeing, rather than pull anything out of this refinery down to one, pulling out just one, pulling out just one because we want to have just a few extra minerals. But Marines getting produced. Oh, baby. Marines, Marines, Marines. Light's got an attack coming up. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, sick. Immediately thwarts the scout. Immediately builds that vulture. Immediately builds that starport. So we're going to see a very different opening. I have shown you just enough to where you see the general vector this is headed along. But how do we lose in Terran vs. Terran? You've heard me say you lose due to mass vultures suddenly surprising you. To a wraith you couldn't deal with and it's some weird ass tank push. Look at this fascinating follow up from Light. This is really subtle if you aren't thinking of the ways that you can lose. Light is about to send out everything that could defend his base against some weird mass vulture opening. And so Light walls himself in to where vultures cannot enter into his base. So now, now Light is safe from mass vultures. Isn't that smart? We see sometimes build orders. Yeah, three back and gas. Sometimes build orders. Build the unit to defend against that unit. Like, I'm building vultures in larger numbers than you to fight against your vultures. But in this particular circumstance, I'm using a wall off to deal with those vultures. Look at this beautiful control from light. There's the attack that's happening. I'm not going to focus too much on the attack because I want to highlight the build and the strategy and the opening that's happening here. In this opening, we follow up with um, the vulture aggression by getting cloaked wraith aggression. So it doesn't get started for a hot minute here. And there it is, get started. The idea behind this is that this forces your opponent to funnel all of his or her resources down this super defensive trajectory. You have to get Goliaths, you have to get Scan, and maybe, if we can micro well enough, maybe we can deal damage to that super defensive player and get ahead anyways. Um, I gotta back up just a little bit. Here's the Wraith and the Cloak coming up in just a moment. You'll notice that as this control tower is researching the Cloak, Vulture production has stopped and now Light is actually going for tank production. He's actually gotten this add-on. Hello. Now, why would Light want to build a tank right now? Tanks are really good. Help defend against Vulture openings. Help defend against some weird tank openings. Wraith tank will beat regular old tank most days of the week. And now we have an expansion coming up. This is the sort of opening that if I want to be aggressive, I like to do, man. You get your tanks out, you get cloaked wraiths out. Typically, cloaked wraiths are never built in numbers greater than two. This means that cloaked wraiths will four-shot SCVs. And in the next um, tactics episode, we're going to be looking at, you know, how wraith damage works. You know, just being annoying. But, you know, the second factory was researched before siege mode. You'll notice that that Refinery gets started as soon as possible. I always love to say you start the refinery right around when you start building tanks, but he didn't have an expansion there. So as soon as he could, he did that. And now we see light extending out onto the map. 
building nothing but tanks, having these wraiths here to help get vision, help shoot down that obnoxious floating barracks. And in a moment, he's going to take another base. So you heard me say that sometimes players will get extra factories. Why do we think that light is going for five factory here instead of four factories we've been seeing? The simple answer is that light has had one factory for a really long time. And so he's trying to catch back up with vulture production. He's trying to catch back up with production of basic units to support these tanks so that he can continue to push out. It's also really common whenever you do some sort of uh, weird aggression-based opening. You don't have enough production structures at the start of the game because you've been building units instead of additional production structures. So you tend to catch back up by building more later. Oh, those rates are so awesome. See these tanks that are here? Well, guess what? Right underneath the tanks! Boom! We got an expansion at the bottom. Come on, sh show it to me. Yeah. Now, for all you aggro donks out there, I got a complete insano nutso build from Haya, who uh, is sort of famous for strategies that cut SCVs out of the equation, both two base all-in SCV cutting builds and one base all-in. We're gonna see a one base, not all the way all-in, but mostly all-in. And I wanna show you with this two things. One, if you wanna go balls to the wall uh, aggressive, this is it. This is, a, this is a great build to do if you love being a one base attacking player. It's great. Um, but the second and more important thing that I want to show is you need to be very careful because you don't get this second base up for a long time. You need to temper your excitement throughout the whole game because in this game that we're watching, I'm going to spoil it for you, Orange, the enemy, wins handily at the end of this game. It's a bit of a pain in the ass for him to get there, but the end of this game is not close. And it was not through any catastrophic failure on Haya's part, it was through just lots of little stuff. So first of all, all of those SCVs stay in the gas the whole time because we build one factory and then we build a second factory. First factory, interesting choice. Builds, whoops, builds a vulture right away. Why? Great to send out there deal with any sort of nonsense BS uh, scout unit, allows us to have some tool against if our opponent went for early vultures. But right after this factory was done, immediate starport. And here we go, vulture speed right away. Yeah. And vulture mines right away. And, and we see a control tower there. Yeah. All right. Hayao's done making SCVs, man. You catch it? <laughs> He's done. It's over. No more SCVs all game long. This is because aggressive openings, at least at their very outset, hit this huge problem where if you're making vultures, you have to make supply depots because vultures use up lots of supply really quickly. So look, that no SCVs being built. Oh, there's a dropship. So essentially all of your money is devoted to building SCV, or excuse me, building supply depots and building vultures. And that's it, that's your life now. All right, nice. So that scout and barracks got moved out there right away. Still important to throw down those uh, minies. So if we ask ourselves the question, you know, how do we deal with any of the problems that I've listed before in other openings? The answer is we're trying to kill him right now. So that's how we stop his vultures. We kill him. That's how we stop his weird tank push. We kill him. So there's these really interesting um, moves you can do with marines to bait out mines, but in particular, you just don't have a lot of stuff as orange. You'll notice I keep coming back here to stress, no SCVs are getting built. There's the cloak, the wraith follow-up. Vultures coming in the front. I don't know if you can see it, but right underneath this barracks, there's actually a bunker. This is a common trick. You hide that bunker under the barracks, making it very difficult for these to target fire properly. There's our wraith coming. Ooh. 
Some of you bastards are like, this is my style. I like this. I'm going to start dropping plant mines in his base. Makes me feel cool. Mines being planted right there. Goliaths, really good against wraiths. Really good against vultures. One of the big reasons why Goliaths are pretty exceptional against vultures is that they don't have a projectile. When they shoot, the receiving unit takes damage instantly, like immediately. And so um, when the mines pop up, the vulture or the Goliaths can shoot them down really easily. Like right here, just waltz, waltzes forward and just picks them off. Now, if you will recall, this is a Terran building SCVs out of two command centers against the Terran building SCVs out of no command centers. And there's four factories done, and an academy, and an armory. All right, now we're starting to build them. Why now? Why now? This is a fascinating consequence of any aggressive opening, but especially vulture-based openings. The instant you start attacking, you start losing vultures, and therefore you don't need to build supply depots anymore because your stuff's dying. So that frees up money that instead of building depots, we get to build workers again. Woohoo! So here's vultures trying to drop and plant mines in all the annoying ways that aggressive players love. And you can see by the supply, some damage being taken, some serious damage being taken by Melverk. Um, the, the interesting follow-up that comes out of Haya, who's still struggling to build SCVs, is that he's begun to build tanks out of these two. He's gotten siege mode, and he's just going to try to bang down the front door. Not a command center there yet. Trying to break in there, using cloaked wraiths to pick things off. But you can repair Goliaths faster than wraiths can kill them. So hey, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do a little droppy stuff. Oh, and there is the start of his first base. Whoo! Ooh, good lord. Oh my gosh. Okay, remember how we said do an opening play and take a second base? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have achieved second base. This is part of the reason why I'm leery of recommending this style of opening if you want to be aggressive. Look at the supply. It's 60 to 50. This is not good at all for our white Terran player. The orange Terran Melverk is present tense ahead and is currently two base ahead to one base just now starting a second. So th this is the, the word of warning, the word of caution. I think the big thing that I would highlight to any opening you wanna try, this is just a sampling, heavily focused on the one factory vulture expand build, is that if you're feeling at any point a little confused as to what you should be doing, try to get to enough vultures that you have control or enough tanks that you're defended, and then work your way towards an academy, four factories, an armory, not an engineering bay. We don't need that until we're on like three base. And just try to work towards this and use these as a launch pad to get your army out onto the map. Like, yeah, like that, like that. We're moving out. You got forces in the middle of the map and this sort of thing. What I want to do now is take a very brief break. It will be, uh, I think, one minute. I think I'm going to do a one-minute break. Let me just find where these videos are that I saved. Great. I'm going to take a one-minute break and just swap out um, all of my stuffs. I'm going to use the restroom. I'm going to get a little bit of delicious water. Ooh, are all these out of order? No, they're in order. Oh, fantastic. Briefly get some water, and then we'll be back with some Terran vs. Terran tactics. Great, great, great. Great, 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 great. Except for the part where I missed my overlay control for duration. Yeah, cool. Be back in one minute, man. Let's just listen to the shape of water until then. <laughs> 